Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We are finished, we are almost finished doing all the problems from here. If there is any problem at all, any math problem at all that gives you trouble, and if you wish to watch the solution to the problem, you will find the solutions to almost all the problems from this book from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book, the second edition, happens to contain, in almost all cases, the exact same problem, and in most cases appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Day 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are a very important part of the exam. They are a big chunk of, big chunk of the exam still. They have not gone away. Unfortunately, the newer books, the revised GRE books, do not provide us with enough practice questions for quantitative comparison questions. For that reason, from day number 401, we began solving some quantitative comparison questions from this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Right now, we are on page number 302. Please turn to it. Page 302, problem number 1. Problem number 1, being problem number 1, is pretty straightforward and simple. So simple, in fact, so simple in fact that almost all the people got this question right on the exam, about 12% missed it. Here's what we are told. The number of number of seconds in an hour. Number of seconds in an hour. And we are asked to compare it against the number of days in 10 years. Number of days in 10 years. Number of seconds in one hour versus number of days in 10 years. Now as always, I insist that at the end of each question, as soon as I finish setting up the problem on the blackboard, pause the video, solve the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that we do together. I insist that you do that and do that for every single problem without exception, no matter how simple, how silly, how ridiculous the question may seem to you. Do you understand? Do it right now. I'm going to give you 5 seconds. All right. Number of seconds in an hour, that's pretty simple. There are, there are 60 seconds in one minute and there are 60 minutes in one hour. So it's just 60 times 60. What about number of days in 10 years? Well, there are 365 days in a year and there are 10 years, which is 3,650. And this amount will be 3,600. 3,600 versus 3,650, the answer is B. The answer is B. Number two. Problem number two. In problem number two, we are being asked to compare. Problem number two, the percentile is 85%. About 15% of people missed it in the exam. We are being asked to compare the average of 13, 31, and 81 versus the average of 13, 30, and 81. Again, I insist that you pause the video. I was just looking to see if I missed anything here. The average of 13, 31, and 8, 81 and 13, 30, and 81. Now, again, I insist that you pause the video and solve it yourself. I'll give you five seconds to do just that. Okay, here we go. If the average of three numbers is the same as the average of the other three numbers, as long as the number of numbers are the same in both groups, which is the case here, there are three numbers here, there are three numbers here, we couldn't do what we are about to do if there were different number of numbers in the two, two groups. But since we have three numbers here and three numbers in this group and three numbers in that group, therefore, if the average of the 
average of the two groups are, the, are equal to each other, if the averages are equal, then the sum of these three numbers has to equal to the sum of these three numbers. Because how do we find the average? The average is 13 plus 31 plus 81 divided by 3, and here 13 plus 30 plus 81 divided by 3. This is how we find the average. So if we were to multiply both columns by 3, if we were to multiply both columns by 3, we find that their sum have to be equal to each other. Obviously, because their averages are equal. Now I'm going to raise this part, the part that we wouldn't actually do in the real exam. This was just to show, to just, just, just to help you understand it. But now that we understand that the sum of the two groups has to be equal to each other, now we start our process, and this is how the process goes. If the sum of this group is equal to the sum of that group, then we look at, we, we do visual inspection. We see 13 here, we see 13 here. Let 13 plays no role. Let's subtract 13 from both columns. Let's subtract 13 from both columns. 13 is gone. I see 81 here, we see 81 here, that 81 plays no role. There you go. Hence the average of this group is going to be greater, it's going to be greater than the average of that group. Because here we have 30 and here we have 31. The answer is A. That's it, we're done. Do you understand? Here's, here's a bonus question for you. Not something that they're asking here. The bonus question for you. Can you tell me the average of these three numbers is going to be how much more than the average of these three numbers? Well, the average of these three numbers, because it is 31 versus 30, which means the sum of these three numbers is one more than the sum of that three numbers, and therefore the average of this, this group here, column A, is going to be one-third more than the average of that. But that was unnecessary work. Do you understand? We simply have to understand that if you were to take a sum of these three quantities, the sum of these three quantities is going to be one more than the sum of those three quantities, and therefore the average of the first column is going to be more than the average of the second column. Problem number three. Problem number three. Problem number three. Again, it's 85 percent. 85 percent. What the hell? I think I just gave away the game, didn't I? Column, we are told that x equals to 4. x equals to 4. We are being asked to compare 3x squared versus 144. 3x squared versus 144. And the percentile was 85%. Again, pause the video and do it yourself. And then we'll do it together. Okay, here we go. We know that x equals 4. So let's put it in here. So it's going to be 3 times 16. 3 times 16. 3 times 16 is not even 100. It's not even 50. 3 times 16 is 48. 48 versus 144, of course, is less. The answer is A. And this is what I mean by, this is what I mean by, what the hell? The answer is B. The answer is B. This is what I mean by, no matter how simple, how ridiculous, how, how silly the question may seem, I insist that you do it here for yourself, every single problem. Do you understand? Don't just sit there and be passive. Number four. Question number four. Question number four, the percentile is 81%, about four-fifths of the people had no trouble with it. We're given a triangle here, we are told that this is x degrees, this is 44 degrees, and this is 44 degrees. And we're being asked to compare x versus, x versus 88, x versus 88. Well, since it's a triangle, since it's a triangle, 44 plus 44 plus x. 44 plus 44 plus x has to equal 180, has to equal 180, which means x equals to 180 minus 88. Let's find out what 180 minus 88 is. 180, or oh better yet, let's not do it this way. Let's subtract, let's subtract 44 from here first. Let's just subtract 88. 44 plus 44 is 88. Let's just subtract 88 from it. x equals 180 minus 88. 180 minus 90, 180 minus 90 would have been 90. 180 minus 90 is 90, that I do know. Therefore, 180 minus 88, because 88 is 2 less than 90, is going to be 92. It's going to be 92. x equals 92. And 92, of course, 92, of course, 
is greater than 88. The answer is A. When the questions of these natures, these percentile of people who are getting it wrong in the question number one, in question number one it was like, uh, I believe, 15%, uh, 12%, and 15%, and 15%, and so forth, and here we have about 19%. This 19% of people who are getting these questions wrong is not because all, all of those 19% 19 people, 19 of the people do not know how to do, do, how to do these questions. A large chunk of those percentiles in the first five problems that, we, that we're going to do here in this video are going to be those people, and it happens to the best of us, it has happened to myself many a time, are those people who are a bit too cocky, they are too careless. And in the carelessness, it can happen to the best of us, we end up making silly mistakes. You know, we see 88 here, 44 plus 44, we see 88 here, we see 88 here, immediately, without, uh, without uh, uh, giving it some thought, uh, leap to conclusion that the answer is C. It's not C, it's A. Number five. Carelessness is something that you cannot afford in the exam, obviously. Number five. Carelessness is something I cannot afford in the exam because I do know because I do know that I am going to miss a few of the hard questions. And if I know that if I am going to miss a few of the hard questions, there is no leeway, there is no room, there is no allowance there to make any mistakes, any more mistakes than that. Because if you were to make any more mistakes, there will be too many. You are going to miss a few in the hard ones. Save your mistakes for the hard questions. Do you understand? Column A, column B. 598.95 squared versus 360,000 and this was 80%. Again, I insist as always that you do it yourself. Always do the problem yourself first before you compare your work, before, before, you, before you watch the video, rest of the video. Compare your work, what you do yourself with the work that we do together. Do you understand? I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do the problem yourself, 598.95 squared versus 3, 360,000. Okay, here we go. The thing to do here is to not look at the 3, 398.95 squared as it is written because it's there, it's there by design. It is there on purpose to annoy the hell out of you. Or round it up to 600. Ask yourself, how much is 600 times 600? Well, 6 times 6 is 36, and then here we have two zeros, here we have two zeros, so we need to add four zeros to it. One, two, three, four. It turns out that 600 times 600 is 360,000, which is what this is. So this is, this is actually 600 squared. Of course, 600 squared, of course, 600 squared is going to be more than 598 squared or 599 squared. Of course, of course 600 squared is going to be more than 599 squared. Answer is B. Answer is B. What this amount is actually is, 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 is not our concern. We are not int interested in. Nobody is asking us. No, in other words, nobody is asking us how much is. Nobody is asking us how much is 598.95 squared. That's not. That's not what they are asking here. These questions are not called quantitative computation, which is why we write down the word computation and maybe cross it out for emphasis. These questions are called quantitative comparison. We are not being asked how much is 598.95 squared. What we are being asked here is, is 598.95 squared equal to less than or more than 360,000? The answer is it is less than that because five because uh, because uh, 600 squared is three. This, this amount is 600 squared, and this is less than 600 squared. Number six. Number six. I don't have a percentile written down for it. I don't know how I missed it. Number six is 77%. Number six is 77%. Number six. Three point four times five point five versus oh I, I left no room. Three point four times five point five versus three times five point five plus 
5.4 times 5.5 column A column B one more time I'm going to read it to you and then I'm going to get out of your way 3.5 3.4 3.4 times 5.5 versus 3 times 5.5 plus 0.4 times 5.5 pause the video do it yourself as always Okay, here we go. Now if you actually sat down and did all the calculation here and there, you missed the point. You missed the point one more time. That is not the point. These questions are not called quantitative computation. They want to see if you can actually compare the two quantities. And here's what's going on. 3.4, 3.4 times 5.5. So 3.4 can be written as 3 plus 0.4. 3 plus 0.4 and this is 5.5. Now, if it makes it easier for you, if it makes it easier for you to see, we can write that as 5.5. We can write this as we can write this as 5.5 times 3 plus 0.4. If it makes it easier for you to compare the two here. And now what's going on? All we all the all that is going on is that we are, we are distributing it 5.5. So it's 5.5 times 3.4, 5.5 times 3. times 3 rather. 5.5 times 3, which is right there, is 3 times 5.5 plus 5.5 times 4, 5.5 times 0.4, which is exactly what this is, 5.5 times 0.4. In other words, we're just distributing it, it's A times B plus C, and we just distribute the A, which is the same as A times B plus A times C, right there, your A is this is our A. A is 5.5. So 5.5 times 3.4. 3.4 is 3 plus 0.4. It turns out that these two quantities are equal to each other. They are equal to each other and therefore the answer is C. The answer is C. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.